Uh, he is a founder. He's the founder of Beyond Barriers and uh, an NGO called Sintosha Sansara. He takes a, uh, he takes care of a lot of children at his house. He treats them as his own children. He has a blessed ministry among youngsters. He has traveled across 200 plus cities, 27 plus countries, and he has a very special uh, talent. Uh, I would like to say a special blessing from God to uh, speak in their level. He, he's a singer, he's an actor, he does, he does minds, uh, you know, he does a lot of things to engage with young crowd and uh, he actually makes them understand that, you know, I understand what you're going through. And that's the level that he gets to and he explains things. So, you know, if I go, go on and on, he has done many theses. He is uh, involved in a lot of uh, social work. He's taking care of a lot of things. And I'm really thankful for such a blessed man of God uh, and uh, really privileged to have him. In My background is psychology and counseling and um, just a technical side of it to see how does my brain work? How does it work? You know, um, this um, lady called Judith Raisman, she said over a decade ago, Judith Raisman called porn oh. sin, erototoxin, theorizing that brain itself might be damaged while watching porn. So the brain is able to get damaged if you're going to watch porn. I'll tell you how the neurotransmitters and how the dopamine and neoneporephrine and all of those things, uh, oxytocin and vasopressin and all of those hormones that begins to work. She speculated that future brain studies would reveal that the surge of neurochemicals and hormones released when someone watches porn has measurably negative effects on the brain. Now, I want to you know, put it in layman's words. In layman's words, there are millions of neurons. Now, me coming from a counseling psychology background, just exp I'll explain it. There are millions of neurons. And when you watch a porn, when there is a a wrong pathway, that's a term that we use, in neurotransmitters, there are neurons that get dented. Now, do we have a control all delete button to delete some of the dented neurons? No. There is no control all delete button to, dent, uh, to delete the, neuron, uh, the dented neurons. But your brain is able to rewire and uh, it's able to reform itself. God has made it that way, you know? So, in a place of how you begin to fire new neurons and wire new neurons, so there are new pathways that begins to be formed. So that's the whole technical side of it. Now, how do people get into this whole place on pornography? The researchers again and again, so many researchers focusing on three things. Why it's becoming a very big problem because of anonymity, accessibility, and affordability. That's why it's becoming a huge problem today. Anonymity, nobody watches me. I mean, I am just where I am and I can just do what I can do. Nobody knows what I am doing. And we have all different kinds of places of how we can you know, hide and how we begin to walk and in things, different place. So what does pornography do? Um, it, we get desensitized to pleasure. So God wired the brain in such a way that it wants to remember where our natural drives are satisfied. Listen to me very carefully. So dopamine, dopamine is the pleasure giver, or you can call it the private detective who looks around to give you that pleasure, to give you what you want. Continued exposure to porn, especially for long periods of time, releases surge after surge of dopamine, giving the brain an unnatural high. So you kind of feel so good over a period of time. So the brain eventually fatigues, limiting the release of dopamine, leaving the viewer wanting more, but unable to reach that level of satisfaction. Now that is called desensitization. So why do people who get into pornography, who are into plays, then they start visiting prostitutes, they start visiting call girls, they start raping and they start doing things, you know? It's, it's, it's amazing in India right now, you know, every 15 minutes a child has been raped. That's the present statistics. I, we, as an organization, work with rape victims and healing their lives, you know, and bringing healing into their lives. Every 15 minutes a child has been raped. 
And the last four years of research, 99.9% .9 of the people who were, into, were involved in some rape were addicted to pornography. The way it desensitized them. So it's, 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 it's the slow slip, not the sudden dip. It's this gradual slope, not the sudden dip. So many a times, young people would say, oh, no, no, I, I mean, I'm not doing that kind of a things. You know, I'm just slowly. It's always just that slowly. I'm sure you know that illustration of a frog in a kettle, right? You warm it up, warm it up, warm it up. And that's what happens. And that's the desensitized to pleasure in a place where it's, it's a slow dip, you know? C.S. Lewis puts this very beautifully. Just like man cannot grow overnight, man cannot fall overnight. He says, just like man cannot grow overnight, man cannot fall overnight. So if I hear, I counsel a lot of teenagers and young people. And when I counsel, when somebody tells me, all of a sudden the boys started doing this. All of a sudden the girls started doing this. And I would always say, it's not all of a sudden. The slip started happening a long time back. Maybe you don't know when the slip happened. You did not know when that slip happened. So one of the things that porn does is desensitization to pleasure. So everyday pleasure begins to lose their luster, including sex. And the viewer expands their pornographic taste and seek out, seeks out for more novel or harder pornography to get the same arousal, means the same dopamine um, you know, hormone to be given. Now look at what James says. James says sin begins in strong desire, but sin, when it's fully grown, brings forth death. That's the ultimate aim of pornography, to bring death. It doesn't look like it is going in that direction, but that's where it's heading in. Okay, two, what does pornography do? Hypersensitized to lust. Dr. William offers a way to understand the sensitization. This is what he says. He's a psychologist. Like a path is created in the woods with every and each successive hiker. If you've been on a hike, you keep walking on a certain places and a path is created. Now, now the plants are not growing there. The weeds are not even growing because there are lots of hikers going in. So do the neural paths set the course for the next time an erotic image is viewed. Listen to me very carefully. Over time, these neural paths become wider as they are repeatedly traveled with each exposure to pornography. It's widened. They become the autom automatic pathway through which interactions with women are routed. The neural circuitry anchors this process solidly in the brain. So this is the hypersensitized to lust. So the more you watch and masturbate, broader and deeper the neuro highway is created. Sometimes it looks like doing in the hiding. That's what the enemy says. Nobody watches you. You think this is just for you. So this is, I work in a lot of secular schools with a lot of teenagers that I mentor are from secular backgrounds. And many a times people ask me this question. Teenagers ask me this question. Uncle, this is just me. I mean, I'm just getting my de-stress. So masturbation is a de-stress, you know. Pornography is a de-stress. And I'm just doing it. It's not just like a de-stress you're doing it. That's a lie. You're actually creating neuro pathways, pathways that's going to become very stronger and stronger and stronger the more you begin to do it again and again and again. Why do some teenagers, why do some young people say, I'm not able to come out of it? I thought there was a time where you thought I can, I can conquer it, I can come out of it. But suddenly you realize, no, I can't. It's gone beyond. Why? Because there are neuro pathways that are solidly formed. Apostle Paul writes this. They have given themselves over to a sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity. See the word he uses. They have given themselves over. That's what we do with pornography. We give ourselves over to allow the enemy to capture those places. See, one thing that the enemy is trying to do is very strong. I, I hope you all know that verse. He comes to steal and destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that you will have life and have it more abundantly. So in a place of how you begin to see things, the first thing that I said was desensitized to pleasure. That's what pornography does. Two, hypersensitized to lust. And the third one is crippled willpower. There's no willpower. So it starts from an, a, an emotional space, but then there's a crippling of the will. 
The process of sensitization and desensitization impacts the prefrontal cortex in the brain. I'm sure if you're somebody medical students or somebody who studies biology, you understand what the prefrontal cortex is. This region of the brain is responsible for our willpower, regulating our behavior and making decisions based on wisdom and morals. So that's why when you're making some decisions, when you heard in the news, I think it was two weeks ago, that there were some school boys who had raped a girl. I said, how in the world they did it? I'm sure the slip started happening long time back. They did not start watching pornography saying, I want to one day rape a girl. I want to one day rape a child. That's my goal. No, they didn't start like that. No, they did not. Some of them even feel so ashamed. Some of them who's been caught, they feel so ashamed what they did. Now, they did not know how they were slipping in and they were slipping in so easily they were slipping in and they didn't know how they were slipping in. Normally when emotions, impulses and urges surge from the midbrain, the prefrontal, uh, pre prefrontal lobes are there to exercise executive control over them. But when this region is weakened, that's the prefrontal lobes, you know, prefrontal cortex is weakened by continual bone use, the willpower is eroded and there is nothing to stop the sense of craving for pornography. Now, this is where this is what the psychologists and medical doctors say. This is where I believe if you are willing and if I am willing, the Holy Spirit is able to work things out. The Holy Spirit is able to empower you out. As a result, the person experiences an urge, not just a desire. Before it started as a desire, but now it's not just a desire. It's an urge. I need to. I know of teenagers that I disciple. I mentor. Some of them tell me, sir, if I don't watch every night pornography and masturbate, if I don't do it, I somehow can't sleep because there is a neuro pathway that has been formed. It's formed in a certain way that you are believing a lie that that's what is very important. Neuroscientists call the problem as hypofrontality. Now, this person is no longer has mastery over his passions, but is a slave to them. And look at what Paul says again. As men and women become calloused and desensitized to God, all that is good, they also experience a great hardness of heart. That's what Paul says. They become slaves to various passions and pleasures. Now, what are some of the promises from the word of God? What are some of the promises from the word of God? If you are sexually pure, you will be living in the will of God for your life. That's one of the promises of God. If you're sexually pure, today we are missing out that purity. Jim Elliott uh, had made a beautiful statement. As a teenager, I read that statement. It still inspires me. He said, a holy man is an awesome weapon in the hands of God. A holy man is an awesome weapon in the hands of God. Today, talk about holiness, talk about purity. Everybody's looking at you and saying, ah, oh, that is not in today's day and age can be achieved. I, it was able to. Jim Elliott's time, maybe. Hudson Taylor's time, maybe. David Livingston's time, maybe. Amy Carm uh, Carmichael's time, a 14-year-old girl who went to Japan on a, a mission trip, and then she heard about the Devadasis in South India, and she landed in a place called Donavur near Tirnalveli, and she started rescuing young girl. Mother Teresa was just 16 years old. Oh, those days it was possible. Not now. No, it is possible even today. Because we have the same God. He's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. If you're not enslaved by your lusts, you will be free to serve others in love. See, you see what here, Galatians 5.13. Read Galatians 5.13, you will know it. It's the difference between lust and love. Today, a lot of relationships are built on lust, I'm sorry to say. A lot of relationships. I had to deal with one of the breakups just two days ago. And one girl and one boy had met together and they were in love with each other. They had even gone to another. These days, that's very commonly happening. Go somewhere, stay in a hotel, have a physical relationship. The girl thinks if she's able to give herself fully to the boy, that's it, you know. And they begin to really walk in and watch pornography together. I watched this, you know, so you watch this and you watch this. You know, the kind of things that are happening in. Now, please understand this. If you're enslaved by lusts, you will not be free to serve others. If you're not enslaved by lust, you're free to serve others in love. It's going to be lust or love. If you're sexually pure, your life will be fruitful and that fruit will be, listen to me very carefully, full of goodness and truths. Sexually pure, bringing the fruit of goodness and truth. If you're sexually pure, your mind will no longer be foggy 
your heart will be teachable if you're sexually pure if you're sexually pure you will be more prepared to be a great lover and to enjoy sexual intimacy when you get married to, with your spouse Today, there are lots of you know people that me and my wife counsel even married people and not enjoying the fullness of what their life is why there are so many places that they have derailed there are so many lies that they have bought in if you're sexually pure you will be an honorable person 1 Thessalonians 4 4 if you're sexually pure person, you will not be enslaved to your passions. Now, let me just quickly close this two slides. The recent research very strongly says that it's a 90 days plan that can help you out of pornography. It's 90 days. Usually they said two weeks, you know, if you're able to abstain from something two weeks, and then they said if you could abstain from something for 30 days, it's a big thing. Any habit to be formed 30 days. But for pornography to be broken on a longer time, it's a 90 days plan. What do you do in these 90 days? One of the first thing, create, craving new pathways is hard, but you have to have the desire to change. It starts from there. I don't have to explain to any of this. Jamie shared it very beautifully. The desire to change, you need to be absolutely intentional. There are times teenagers and young people send me some messages on WhatsApp and said, sir, I don't know, sir, I don't know, I don't keep doing it, sir. I keep, you know, sending these messages, sir, sir, I keep going into that website, sir. And I just said, I'm so sorry. They said, what? Why, why sorry? I said, you're not intentional about your life. You're absolutely not intentional about your life. Do you see a purpose over your life? Do you see God's plan over your life? Do you see some uniqueness and preciousness over your life? Many a times I begin to see teenagers and young people who are slipping into pornography and getting into some of these places of sin and all of that. They don't see themselves precious. They hate themselves. There are teenagers that I know, they hate themselves. There are young people that I know, they hate themselves. And in that place of a deep emotional lack, in that place of a deep emotional hurt, they begin to walk into certain places. Watch out for it. Solid social relationships with practice, patience, and perseverance, freedom from porn can be a new reality. But for that, you need, to ha you need to really value solid social relationships. Not that hiding one one relationship, no. The relationships that you are in, your family. How many of you are very close with your father? How many of you are very, very close with your mom? How, you, how many of you, I know you're all young people. And many a times parents say this, and I keep correcting them in my parenting seminars. They say, so they are a teenager now, so we can't connect with them. And I would say, no, even if they are teenagers, they have to. Me and my wife, we started an orphanage in 2006, 2007. But in 2011, we realized, no, institution is not going to help the children. So we dismantled the orphanage and we have adopted the kids. The paperwork is going on as each of them are crossing 18. The adoption papers are being worked here. It's a big fight with the Indian government, but we are doing but the moment we started adopting these 10 children, I have like nine teenagers inside the house right now. Now they love to spend time, me and my wife, every week we spend almost one to two hours, one-on-one -on -one time with them. Why? It's that relationship that we need to be valuing, not just walking away. You come from home or come from outside to the school, from the college or from the school, go straight into your room, lock the door, then you are. And you go ask the mother, mother would say, yeah, yeah, he has come, he's always very tired. So he's inside the room. Take time, be intentional to value those solid relationships. Grandmother, grandfather, uncle, aunts, in the place of how you begin to walk and proper relationships because when you don't value the relationships that's already there you start seeking for something else and many of the pornography struggle is basically out of love you're longing for love and going behind something that's not actually love cannot give love celebrate your victories when you overcome something celebrate be thankful celebrate it four be intentional about your triggers write it down what are some of your triggers what time of the day kind of triggers you are? There are many teenagers who would say, it's usually that afternoon time. Is that a late night when I just sit there, just browsing in and just going on and on and on and on. I'm just scrolling down on and on. Watch out for your triggers. What are some of those places that you begin to trigger? Write it down, be intentional. Why be intentional? You have a purpose over your life. God has a plan over your life. God is going to use you in a mighty way, which many of you don't even believe. I'm sorry for being straight. 
aim bigger think big aim bigger god has a big plan for you i believe this very strongly for every one of the teenager and young person on alive on this planet earth there is a purpose of god over their lives that is way way beyond what they can ever imagine and think way way beyond what you can ever imagine and think and the enemy lies it and we buy the lie and the enemy lies that to us and we buy that lie no be intentional about it find your purpose accept that preciousness and uniqueness you're so unique becoming something new whether people started using porn in adolescence or in adulthood their goal is not to become what they once were once mind can never return to innocence rather it can grow into something new there are some teenagers would say this i did it you know now what do i do the lord can renew your mind the lord can bring that purity i i i can i cannot i've lost count i've countless number of times i've prayed with teenagers who have gone through you know sexual abuse of impurity or done pornography and things like that i would pray a prayer of purity over them and i would do that at the end of this session purity why to ask the lord to give you back that place of purity with your hands with your mind with your eyes with your body that purity of the things that you have done to come to that place of purity god can restore that purity back because he is a god of redemption and he is also a god of restoration and he is a faithful god of what we begin to do things be intentional about the triggers as i talked about creating a balanced healthy lifestyle is very critical Dr Lasser says this so finding ways to recreate relax quiet time those kinds of things are some of the new healthy habits what what do i mean i started off with that neuro pathways you need to create neuro pathways it's like the person beginning to hike you've been walking on the same hiking trail you need to create a new hiking trail sometimes it's difficult when you go on a new hiking trail I still remember me and my wife my wife is from Nepal we were in Nepal once and as we were in Nepal once we were on an elephant as we were on an elephant going into the forest suddenly the elephant uh, sensed that there was some other wild animal and it started changing its trail it never did not go in the same trail and the you know the man who was there and we asked him said what happened he said no i can't do anything now the elephant will take us back but it will not go the same way we usually go i said why the elephant said maybe there is a tiger or a leopard or something that is that it has sensed it and what the elephant did it just started breaking all the trees and the plants and started making a new pathway oh my goodness we were sitting there on the top of this elephant in nepal with that you know it's like a plank a caged kind of a thing that is there and we were sitting there and we were like woo 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 going in and it was a beautiful experience it was and the, you know the guy said said don't worry about it the elephant will take you back to the campus will take you back to the campus see sometimes it's difficult to getting that new way but that's what we need to be doing in purity in thought remember this verse proverbs 23:7 for as he thinks so is he addressing the pain of the past very very critical most of the teenagers that i counsel get into pornography because of some sexual abuse that has happened some physical abuse that has happened some emotional abuse that has happened and they have not dealt with that pain they have not dealt with that pain and they have limiting god they're limiting god and saying god cannot deal with that pain and sometimes we have glorified that pain the pain is much bigger than you know who god is no don't glorify the pain don't glorify the past glorify god start thanking god in a place of how you begin to walk and start being grateful to god that god is able and more than able to do much more that you can ever imagine in your life he's able to do or what you can next is vigilance what is vigilance is you need to be persevering if the road for recovery is like being in a boxing ring it says a boxer keeps his gloves up to protest uh, protect his face his elbows down to protect his ribs his eyes focused on the opponent for every move you need to be vigilant absolutely as you persevering you need to be vigilant this is where i always have this prayer say lord i can't only you can help me out yes i will be vigilant but as i vigilant you know sometimes we have faith 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 but we lose the work faith without work is not going to help faith with work is going to be prudence 
faith and work, keeping that place of balance, having a purposeful routine. Your days have to be captured. What you're going to do from the time you get up in the morning. If you're going to say, I'm just going to do whatever it is. You know, I will just make the schedule first. Get that routine done. You are walking in a purpose. You don't have time to waste to just scroll down that Facebook place, that TikTok. Oh, TikTok is banned right now. Okay, that place of Marco Polo or Kick or Hike or any of those places. No, I don't have time. I don't even have time to just go on some of those scoot parties and you know all of this. No, I don't have time. We live in a different world right now. Everything is so virtual right now, right? Let me just close this. In 1970s, Dr. Bruce Alexander of Simon Fraser University did an, uh, an experiment called the Rat Park Experiment. What they did, they had put these rats and in one of these small cage, they had kept the rat and they had kept two um, glasses. One was pure water and another one was a blue liquid that was basically morphine that was kept there. And the rat would drink the water all the time, never touch the blue liquid because it didn't smell even good. And it always, but because the rat did not have anything to do, slowly the la rat over a period of time, but around the cage, the rat saw people going and then there are other rats going around and doing things and all of that. But this rat was in the cage. It was a very small cage. Now over a period of time, the rat began to slowly go and smell this blue liquid and started tasting it. It was not very good in taste, but the morphine, it hit the brain so much, the rat began to like it. Now what the rat did, it started going now back, not to the white glass with the water, with the plain water, but to the morphine mixed blue water. It would go get itself that morphine, go off to sleep. So the rat was like, okay, I don't enjoy anything. It was craving out that it wanted to go out. Then all of a sudden, the scientists, what they did is took the rat and started putting in a rat park that they had created with all the rats growing, growing around and there were slides and all different things with nuts and everything. And suddenly this rat began to look around and say, am I in heaven? What is this? And the rat began to go around, go around, go around. It went around and started engaging in all of those you know, relationships and social places and all of that with the other rats and with everything that was there. And slowly this head started aching started aching and it just looked around and it just said, okay, where is that blue liquid, blue liquid? But it started looking around and, and a rat started making this decision. And the experiment, Dr. Bruce says this very beautifully, the, sta the rat started realizing that taking just the blue liquid and going off to sleep is not the right thing to do. Because I have so many people around and I can have so many different things around. No, I need to choose the white liquid. And the rat started choosing the white liquid. See, it's a choice that needs to come. Let me just close with this. The gospel says, this is my body which is given for you. Luke 22, 19. The porn culture says, this is her body taken by me. The gospel says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Porn culture says, relax, for there is nothing wrong with your fantasies. Jesus said, this is my body, which I've given you. It was broken for you. But pornography says, this is her body taken by me. I was in this, one of the cities in North India, leave the city unnamed. I got a call from a friend and said, George, I want you to meet this 21-year-old girl who's a sex worker, who's a prostitute. Can you just meet with her? And I said, hey, you know, I don't meet girls alone like this, and especially someone whom I don't know. He said, George, I know it. That's why I've asked her to come to a restaurant and sit in a public place, and she'll be wearing a, a yellow T-shirt. Can you just go and just sit there and talk with her? I called up my wife, and I just said, hey, I'm going. My wife said, go. I'll pray for you. Keep me informed. So I went in. As I went into this restaurant, I saw the pimp standing outside, and then I walked in the restaurant, and I saw the girl on one side, she was sitting and I slowly went and said, you're so-and-so. She said, yes, sir, please sit down. And she was sitting in a certain angle facing on the other side. I said, uh, would you like to come this side? Or, you know, it was a big table. She just said, no, I'm sitting here because the pimp is watching there. She was enslaved into sex industry by first showing her pornography. And she was sitting there and she was saying, the sir, I'm running typhoid. I'm having high fever typhoid. But this very night, I have to go back and I have to satisfy at least three people. 
Sir, can you do something to help me out? I began to counsel her and talk to her and it was just a horrible story. I didn't want to go into some of the details. I would start crying, you would start crying. And when I came to a place and I just started looking at this and saying, hey, we need to be very careful. I want to say this something very powerful. Every time you spend time watching pornography, you're actually helping a girl to be trafficked and be done something. You're actually you are instrumental every time you watch pornography. I'm sorry for saying this very straight. Every time you sit there for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, five minutes, three minutes, it's helping somebody to traffic someone. I was in the country of Cambodia where 14 year old girls, 13 year old girls in the evening, they would sell themselves. I was called to speak at a school where they were rescued all these girls. And when I started speaking in that school and I started listening to some of these stories, some of the horrible, horrible stories of abuse that began to happen. The expressions that you see on pornographic videos is not the right expressions. It's not the realistic expressions, which many of the young people don't even know. There is such abuse, there's such deep abuse that begins to happen. Let me just pray and close. I want you to bob yourself. I don't know wherever you are. If you are in a place, you have done something, or you've been walking in this particular journey, Jamie shared it so beautiful about some of those principles. Can you be intentional about some of those principles? I put down some practical psychological principles. Can you put down some of these things? Can you make that strong conviction right now? Don't wait till this evening. Don't wait after half an hour. Don't wait after 30 minutes. Don't say, after it, let me talk to my friend. No, right now. Can you make a decision right now and say, Lord, I'm sorry. I can't, only you can. I want to come and come to the place of total surrender. Come to that place of total surrender. Just repent. You know that verse by heart, 1 John 1, 9. If you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Sometimes, you know, the enemy tells that lie. How many times would you keep asking for forgiveness? How many times you have fallen? There is no sin that is so big that God cannot forgive. And there is no sin that is so small that God would neglect, ignore. There is no sin that is so big that God cannot forgive. Right now, this very evening, let it be an evening of deliverance and freedom right now. And you come before the Lord and say, Lord, here I am. I am not going to be instrumental for another girl to be trafficked. I am not going to be instrumental for another girl to be abused. I am not going to be instrumental for another boy to be abused. Just come before the Lord and say, Lord, I am not going to be instrumental to a place where I'm going to glorify sin in my life. I'm going to glorify some of these temptations in my life. No, you are much bigger than my temptations. You are much bigger than my weaknesses. You are much bigger than my past. You are much bigger than my abuse. You are much bigger than all that I've gone through. You're much bigger than that. He is able and more than able. Teenagers, young people, he's able. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus, wherever the teenagers are sitting, maybe they're sitting inside their room, maybe on their beds, on their desks, on their sofas. I don't know where they are sitting right now. Father, I pray for the power of God to just come into that presence, into that place and touch them right now. Touch them right now. Lord, there would be a supernatural strength, supernatural power that would be sent into these lives that when they would start moving out, even when they make some of these steps to start overcoming some of these temptations, it would become so easy because your presence and your strength would be much more powerful in these lives, Lord. Lord, if there is any girl, any boy who has been sexually abused and they are having that high sense of insecurity and inferiority and very low self-esteem. Father, I pray for purity right now, that you would restore that purity back into that body, into that organs of their body, you would restore that purity back, Lord. 
whatever is their journey. Lord, you don't care about what they, where they have fallen and how they have fallen. No, you only say that your grace is sufficient. You only say that your cross has paid it all. Your cross has paid it all. Lord, I pray for my young people, for these teenagers, that they would never glorify sin. They would never glorify their weaknesses. They would never glorify what they are going through and say, this is too big. They will not blame their families. They will not blame their abuse situations. They will not blame some of those difficult situations in their own context and environments. Rather, they would say, my life is unique. My life is precious. My life is special. And there is a plan of God over my life. There is a purpose of God over my life. And I I'm not going to miss it. Lord, I pray that you would help them, Lord. That they are not going to miss that purpose of God. And the enemy, enough that you have robbed things over these lives. I bind you in the name of Jesus. You have no authority over these lives. All that spirit of fear, I cast you out. All that spirit of lust, I cast you out. All that spirit of disobedience and rebellion, I cast you out. All that spirit of self-reasoning and beginning excuses for the sin that you are involved in, I cast you out. Lord, I pray for that spirit of restoration. I pray for that spirit that they would accept that spirit of mercy, that spirit of grace, that spirit of the faithfulness of God. Lord, I pray that you would so powerfully work things out, Father Lord. Lord, I pray for my precious, precious teenagers and young people that they would not give up. No matter what it is, they would not give up. Help them to move forward, Lord. Thank for giving me a privilege. And thank for bringing us to this beautiful platform that's arranged by ICPF. Lord, we just want to thank you. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so, so much, uh, George, sir, uh, for that wonderful uh, and practical message. I sincerely believe, again, it's, uh, it will be highly beneficial for everyone. And I believe if you have taken the notes, uh, your friends, if they, are not, they, if they haven't joined in, please make sure you are uh, sharing that with them. Uh, it's really crucial. And I just want to thank you all once again for being with us in this platform. I also want to thank all those who have joined us through Facebook and uh, this is a special thanks to those who are going to watch this uh, later on after we have broadcasted this. So thank you for that.